Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today we're going to look at the murder of Lieutenant Eric Shoehandler, Gilbert Police Department, Arizona. Lieutenant Shoehandler was 42 years old. Now he had over 21 years of law enforcement experience. Now he'd been with the Gilbert Police Department 16 years. Now he'd also been with a department up in New Jersey and then also with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for about four years. Now, he had two daughters and a sister, and at the time of his death, both his parents were alive. Now, sadly, his mama would eventually die before she got to see justice for her son. Now, there's two suspects in this case, both of them career criminals. So, as you might guess, there's just... Nothing to really talk about in terms of goodness in either one of these two fellas. It's January 28th, 2010. Now, Lieutenant Shoehandler, he's out cruising around. Even though lieutenants have a lot of administrative duties, the ones that still like to get out in police and see what's going on, they'll jump in their squad car and get out in the real world and see what's going on. Now he sees a pickup truck and the license plate is partially obscured. Now that could be an accident or that could be the driver doesn't want the police to see that his tags expired. Now he gets the vehicle stopped in a mall parking lot, Lakeview Village. Now the lieutenant, he goes up to the driver's side. He gets the driver's identification. Now while he's up there, he went on and he got the passenger's driver's license as well. So now he walks back to the car. He runs both their names. Now the dispatcher comes back and says that the passenger... He's got a warrant for his arrest. So he follows policy. He requests another car to make the scene to help him with this arrest of this wanted party. Now, Lieutenant Shoehandler, he gets back out of his car. He starts walking back to the truck, and he cuts in between his car and the truck, and he's walking up to the passenger side of the truck. Now, right before he's going to get to the passenger door of the truck, suspect number two, the one sitting on the passenger side that had the warrant, he hops out of the truck. He shoots the lieutenant point blank range in the head. Testimony in court would later show that Lieutenant Shoe Handler had powder burns on his face. Now, as soon as he's hit, the lieutenant goes down. The shooter gets back in the truck when the truck leaves the scene. Now, two sergeants from the Mesa Police Department, which is Borders Gilbert, they're close enough to that scene that they actually hear the gunshot. And they go to investigate. And they make the scene eventually and they find Lieutenant Chu Handler laying in the lot. Now two civilians had run to the scene from the Taco Bell. One of them got on the lieutenant's handy talkie and was hollering that there was an officer down and that they needed help. Now the second civilian 
he mentioned that the lieutenant still had the shooter. He had his driver's license still in his hand, and he was trying to hand it to the witness. Now, it's not more than just a minute, and Gilbert police officers, they spot the truck on baseline down there around Higley, which is just a couple of blocks east of the shooting scene. Suspect vehicle, it cuts back northbound on Higley, and he hits Highway 60 eastbound. So now this Chase is heading towards Superior, Arizona. And as you might guess, shooting a police officer is going to get you a whole lot of attention. Now, there was somewhere between 40 to 50 police cars involved in this chase. He had Gilbert PD, Mesa, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, Penal County Sheriff's Office, and the Arizona Highway Patrol. Now during this chase, shooting suspect, he climbs into the bed of the truck and he starts tossing heavy tools and equipment out the back. Now one of the items he was able to throw out the back was a full-size generator. Now, several of these objects disabled squad cars during the chase. And thinking that that's not enough to get rid of the police, he then cranks off rounds to pursuing vehicles. Now, eventually, these two morons, they run out of gas in the middle of Highway 60 there, somewhere around the county line between Gila County and Penal County up there around Superior and just a rock's throw away from top of the world, Arizona. So now they both get out of the vehicle and according to the resource material, the driver suspect has a weapon too. So of course the police, they open up and they shoot both suspects. As you might guess, neither suspect dies. Now, the driver, his trial comes pretty comes pretty quick because within 10 months, the driver's convicted of aggravated assault, drive-by shooting, unlawful flight. Now, he's given 107 years in prison for his part. Now, the shooter, he uses the old stall tactics. And it would take nine years for this case to see the inside of a courtroom. Now that's despite the fact that the suspect was found competent three different times by experts. And the question was, was, did the suspect understand the charges and the court proceedings? and Was he competent enough to aid his attorney in his defense? In other words, a bunch of mess. Now, in this nine-year period, he had eight different defense attorneys. Ten different doctors examined him. And, of course, you had difference of opinions. Depends on who's paying for the doctor. State doctors versus the suspect's doctors. March 21st, 2012, though, the shooter, he's convicted of a different homicide unrelated to this one. Now he's given life without parole for that murder. It wouldn't be until May 7th of 2019 when he's finally convicted for the murder of Lieutenant Shoehander and he's given another life sentence on top of the one he already had. Lieutenant Eric Lewis Shoehandler. End of watch, January 28th, 2010.